Welcome, everybody. Uh, welcome to the masterclass. Today, we're excited to me, Nick, and uh, my uh, co host extraordinaire, the incomparable Pete McKendrick. Uh, we're going to go over digital payments with Rupert with our very own Gabby. Gabby, welcome. Hey, everyone. Thanks so much. Happy to be here. Excellent. Um, I thought that dog behind you was real until right now. So <laughs> I tried to hide it before uh, we went live, but then I was given some very positive reinforcement that it was good. So <laughs> that's awesome. That's good. Well, uh, welcome. Uh, well, pizza, pizza. I don't know about you, but is in a perfect freeze frame right now, where he just looks like the happiest man ever. So. <laughs> um, but uh, welcome everybody. Uh, really excited to have everybody here. You see, we've got a bunch of people in already. Uh, today, we're going to go over our digital payments with Rupert and talking about some of the new features that are coming out uh, that are out now as well and what's coming uh, with Gabby. Uh, Gabby, you want to give a quick little intro on you? Yeah, for sure. Uh, so, hey everyone, I'm Gabby. I've been at Roofer for about a year and a half at this point, uh, working very specifically on our fintech products. So. Basically, anything that touches money, we want to be involved in, help, in helping streamline that. Uh, so right now, we're very heavily focused on getting you paid as quickly as possible and presenting very nice, bespoke, professional-looking invoices to your customers. That's awesome. Super important. You want to run a healthy business? Uh, you always see online in the Facebook groups, like the biggest thing that you want to do is, obviously, everyone thinks of sales, everybody thinks of marketing, but you want to make sure that uh, you're getting paid and your bookkeeping's there. Um, so that's important. Hey, Pete. Hey, hopefully that fixed my connection, but we'll, we'll, we shall see, I guess. <laughs> awesome. Sounds great. Uh, so we just gave a quick little intro on Gabby. And uh, before we get into everything, I uh, want to announce uh, this is a big thing with Pete. Pete's uh, at the uh, main presenter there is our Rise Tour. Our Rise Tour is back for 2024. We're doing 10 cities and it's starting on April 23rd in Toronto, my hometown. So I see some of the people in the chat right now. Um, uh, and I know some of you guys either from um, a, a previous rise, like Nick. Nick and I got to meet each other. Nick, uh, back in. Uh, I see a Nick Ramos in there too. So what up, Nick? Um, really excited, uh, especially having it in our hometown, uh, my hometown anyways, to have it there. So if you haven't gone to it yet, uh, you see in the chat there, roofer.com slash rise. It's $25. That's it to go in to register. You get a lot, a lot of great learning on how to run your business, how to market, listening to some industry professionals that are local to you and have some great speakers like Pete McKendrick uh, right there. And then uh, we also have uh, a couple other ones in there as well. So uh, come by, come take a look at it and excited to see you all. We're doing Toronto, Jacksonville, Nashville, Pittsburgh, Denver and Chicago. So double check new, new orleans, orleans that's it that's how i was missing that one so uh take a look at rupert.com slash rise and you'll see that all there but uh pete why don't you take it away we and uh, we'll dive into a little bit more on the payments process yeah you know i think uh, obviously you guys have not to one of our uh rise Just definitely check the rise events are fantastic in my last logo a little bit of lagging. Lagging badly. Are you, can you guys hear me okay? Okay. <laughs> Sorry about it. I don't know what's up with my connection today, but uh, let's see what I can do here. No worries. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, so let's talk about... Sorry, go ahead. Go, go. <laughs> All you. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. If I lag, just jump in and, and on top of me there, Nick. Uh, cool. I can't tell if I'm lagging or not, so... <laughs> uh, so yeah, let's dive into payments. Uh, you know, one of the first things we want to talk about, I think when it comes to payments is how in today's day and age, obviously the way that people are making payments, uh, on, in a lot of things are, are changing considerably and, uh, contracting is not an exception to that. Uh, you know, uh, not that long ago, I can't remember exactly what I was paying for, but, uh, they asked me to write a check and I was like, I don't even have checks anymore. Right. I, no one has, does people even have a checkbook anymore. I don't even know. So, um, so, you know, the days of running out and driving around collecting checks, I don't think are, uh, you know, are, are definitely fading into the past here. I know I, I spoke with a contractor once that said he spent, I want to say at least one day a week driving around chasing checks, you know, just driving around, going to houses, trying to, to get a check from homeowners that he had previously done work for. 
you know, driving up to a couple hundred miles in a day trying to retrieve checks. So you can imagine the amount of time and energy that's being wasted to chase down these handwritten checks. And so uh, definitely the digital payment thing is changing things and, uh, you know, definitely for the better, uh, making us more efficient, making it a little bit easier for us to get paid. So uh, that's where Gabby comes in with uh, payments today. Yeah. And uh, Gabby, there's one of when you were doing your research and getting this all set up, there's one story that really kind of stuck out to me. What was the 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 contractor? I believe it was it was it Watchman Roofing um, that spent all that time driving out to jobs each and every time just to collect checks. Yeah, they basically allotted a, a, a exactly as Pete said, a day a week where someone would have to go in and uh, spend an entire day optimizing their Google Maps route, going house to house. Um, and I even spoke to another customer where they paid one of their employees per check that they would pick up. So on top of you know losing a day's of productivity and generating new leads, they were also having to pay for someone's time on top of you know already having it, that person work with them uh, to go out to someone's house to go pick up a check. That's crazy. Yeah, what an incredible waste of time, right? I mean, just uh, I mean, obviously a necessary evil. We have to get paid, but definitely a completely inefficient process, right? You know, just a complete waste of our time that we could be doing a lot of. Uh, of better things with it, uh, and better utilizing those employees. So, um, I guess let's get into, uh, what you guys have done, Gabby, and, and how you guys have brought payments into roofer and, and how we're effectively taking payments now. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so really at our core and, and what I'm hoping will come through during today's demo is, um, everything that roofer and our development team and product team have been doing is just, trying to make it as easy as possible for you guys to run your entire business through our platform and remove a lot of the duplicate entry that you might be experiencing today. And even through Roofer six months ago, uh, we've made a ton of improvements on top of uh, what you were seeing in the app before. And so as I go through the demo, I'll kind of call out the changes that we've made, the changes that are upcoming. Um, and then if you have any thoughts or you know feedback, feel free to throw it in the chat. Um, I work directly with the engineers. And this is a great way for you know you to get your voices heard and impact our roadmap in a really positive way. So let me go ahead and share my screen and get started. Cool. So you all should be seeing the roofer proposals page. Is that correct? Thumbs up. Correct. Cool. Uh, so if you think of you know roofer and and your overall workflow. Um, our goal is to take you from lead to payment in as seamless a way as possible. So right now I'm looking at my proposals page. In this example, I've already created my uh, measurement report and I created a proposal off of that report. And here you can see I've created you know, these two, which I'll go through today for the demo. So for the first one in this list, if I click into it, you know, you'll be able to see the details of the proposal itself, um, all of the you know, listed line items, and you can see that I've hidden my columns uh, for line items and pricing. So from here, I'm ready to go into uh, invoicing for my customer. So I'll click this create button in the upper right hand corner and you can click either create invoice or create material order. So this is one of the big things that we've developed in the last six months where you no longer have to do any sort of duplicate entry. I know for some users who are still using QuickBooks, they were creating these really nice, beautiful looking proposals and then to avoid duplicate entry, just creating one single item in their uh, QuickBooks account that said roof replacement or roof repair. And so now with this, you still have that level of granularity without having to go through and redo all of that manual entry. Uh, and you can preserve the view that your customer is seeing. So I'll go ahead and click create invoice. You'll see a preview of whatever you've created for your customer. And if I click continue, we'll automatically create that invoice on your behalf. And again, you'll see that the column settings have automatically copied over all of the line items here are here and as well as uh, the subtotal, the total and the balance. That's such a huge time saving and just so convenient. And I know my dad and my parents do that for their companies. They type out all the individual items and stuff in QuickBooks and, and get them coming over. For this to be that specified to the one proposal and all the items that are one to come over is just unbelievable. That makes it so much easier. Yeah. Um, and from here, all you really need to do is click in to add a due date. Um, so I'll go ahead and say, you know, my issue date was today and, uh, my due date is April 30th. 
And you'll notice that the invoice immediately went from a draft status to ready to send. Uh, and this really comes into play when we're thinking about, you know, dashboarding and being able to easily track where your money is and when you can expect to get paid. Um, so I'll quickly just open in a new tab, my invoicing dashboard, so you guys can see what that looks like. And so this is going to be where you as a business owner are going to be, you know, tracking those invoices and making sure that you're getting paid on time. Oh, just so pause you, for a sec. The, uh, the tab isn't showing. I think it's sharing only the one screen. There fair we go. enough. Yeah. Right. <laughs> okay. Um, so this is here on the left hand side, the invoices tab. Uh, and this will be where you're kind of able to come in and see at a glance, what are my next steps for any of my invoices? Uh, I can look at all my draft ones and see what I need to do in order to get that to ready to send uh, and so on and so forth. And they're pretty much ordered in priority. So it's like, okay, I need to get these ready to go out. And then um, if I click past due, um, that'll make it really easy for you to say, oh, I need to go in and follow up with all of these customers. And so when you're thinking of following up with customers, um, as Pete and Nick were saying, you know, the biggest thing that you care about is making sure that you get paid on time. Uh, and this has been one of the biggest benefits we've seen with through for payments is you don't need to go and, you know, track down those customers and try to get those, uh, get them to write you checks or mail them in. Um, all of this can be done directly through Roofer now. So I came back into my invoice. I'll click preview and send and click send invoice. And uh, right now we are working on invoice templates. Um, so you won't have to do this manually, probably starting within the next week and a half or two weeks. So you can create an invoice template uh, for emails and have consistent messaging across your entire team. But for now, I'll go ahead and just say like, hey, here is your example invoice. And then at the bottom, this is where, you know, the true power of roofer payments really comes in. You can go ahead and start accepting online payments directly through our platform. Um, and then uh, you can kind of customize it based off of your business needs. So we know that, you know, credit card processing, while it is the most convenient for your users, uh, it does come at a cost. So we have seen a lot of users say, I only want to take ACH if the job is over, you know, a couple thousand dollars. Um, or, I'll, you know, sometimes I will take credit card, but it's not on every job. It's on a case by case basis. We did want to make that really easy for you guys to customize. So here's where you can turn it on or off. Uh, and then you can also just decide whether you are asking for the full amount of the invoice or uh, for a lot of our users, they say, you know, we take a 50% deposit on proposal signature and then the last 50% or the remainder of the balance at the end of the job. So I can just type in 50%. You'll see us automatically calculate that amount. And then I'll say that this is due on March 27th. Um, and I'll click send invoice. And that'll send out a payment request to your customer for them to review. They'll get the entire invoice and I'll actually show you what that looks like now. That's so, super powerful there. To be able to choose between ACH and, and credit card. And like, granted, we have some of the best payment rates in the industry, but some con customers still don't want to pay 2.8% unless they're looking for those points. So you can really get that back with the ACH, which is awesome. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and we do make it easy for you to track. So if your customer says like, oh, I didn't see that payment request come through, you can just resend the payment request and we'll allow you to just immediately send it out to them again. Um, and you'll also now be able to track that through the job itself. So if I click view job details, here on the right-hand side, you'll see that we emailed the invoice. And if I click view invoice and pay, this is exactly what your customers are going to see. So they'll see this huge banner at the top that says how much money they're being asked to pay and by which date. Uh, and if they scroll down, they'll see exactly what you were seeing on the back office side. So I'll go ahead and type in some test credit card details just so you guys can see an example of, you know, how quickly this really is for you and your customers. So I'll click charge card and we'll send that over to our processor to process payment. And it pretty much processes in real time. Um, if there are ever any errors, they'll, your customers will see it immediately. That way, you know, they know exactly what they need to do in order to actually pay you. Uh, and we will also send you and all of your back office employees uh, a, an automated email that says, hey, you got paid. 
Um, so it keeps everyone very much on the same page. You, the job assignee, anyone associated to the job, as well as your customer, is all kind of operating under the same information uh, and all of this kind of updates in real time. That's super cool. Yeah. Um, and then the last thing that I really wanted to touch on here is, um, let me go back to the invoice. Um, so you'll see that now, originally it was, uh, pending payment or ready to send. Now it's in partial payment. So again, it just keeps you and your back office employees as up to date as possible. and makes it really easy for you to, uh, filter that initial table. So you can see all of your invoices. What do I need to do next? And you'll also be able to click on these individual credit card transactions and view their funding status. So this is one of the things that I see most often and one of the biggest pain points that I've heard from our users who have experience with other payment processors is that they have no idea where their money is. Um, typically, when you process a credit card, uh, you'll get a notification saying, yeah, this credit card for $384 is approved, but I'm not immediately seeing it in my bank account. Instead, there's typically a batching and a funding process, but it requires a lot of manual reconciliation where you're looking at your bank account, you're looking at your invoices, you're looking at your payment processor and trying to match which payments are in your account versus what you're seeing in your you know, CRM and your invoicing tool. So with this, we make it super easy. As soon as we get notified uh, by the payment processor that the money is on its way to your account, you'll see this status automatically update to in transit. And then once it hits your bank account, this will also automatically update to say funded. So there's never any question as far as like, where is my money? Um, we'll update you directly through the app. And we're actually working on a couple of email notifications to make it even clearer and even uh, more transparent um, on where your money is and when you can expect it. That's cool. The transparency is key there. It really opens up that door because like we talked about the use case of somebody driving around or paying someone for that. Now with the click of the button, you can get that sent out and get paid online. I actually did that with uh, one of our power users, uh, uh, John Tucker. He gave me a call and said uh, he was having some trouble with something and uh, we were on FaceTime and we did it together. So I got to see in real time him sending it out to that customer and it was it was great. And he said he got paid within the hour, which was was awesome. Got the notification that's been paid and in two days it's going to be in his bank. So makes a big difference there. Uh, it's, it's some really fantastic stuff that we see coming in there. Um, we had a couple of questions that came in. Uh, one of which was the rates. So I let them know that 2.8% on credit cards, some of the best rates in the industry, everyone, like you're not going to find much better rates than that. Uh, and 0.5 uh, with ACH with the max of $40. Um, and then one of the questions that did come up was, can you pass that, that those fees on to the customer? Any update on that, Gabby? Yeah. So at the moment, it's not automatically built in. Um, what we've been recommending and what a lot of our users are doing is if you know your your customer is going to be paying by credit card, you can always add in a line item called processing fee or convenience fee uh, and just add it as an extra line item here. So that way it's kind of passed through to the customer. Uh, I would say we anticipate having that feature built into the product uh, late Q2 is what I'll say. Oh, cool. That was before yeah. that. I thought that's exciting. And then the other question before we move on is... Uh, uh, roofer payments, uh, will that integrate with QuickBooks? So um, I would actually take it a step back or even a step further. I'm not sure what the right direction is there. So roofer <laughs> as a platform, we plan on having a full integration with QuickBooks. Um, and that is expected, I would call it, let's say July timeframe. Um, we're going to do everything we can to ship it earlier than that. Um, but do want to be like, you know, tempering some expectations. Um, but the way that you can kind of think of it is that'll include customer records, that'll include an integration with your catalog, taxes uh, or tax zones, and then also invoicing and payments. So it would be one step further than just a, a payment integration. Um, it would be through Roofer Payments, but you can uh, export all of your invoices and your payments into your QuickBooks account. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, any other questions that you saw come through, Nick? Yeah, Nick says, uh, do you store credit cards for client rebilling during those 50% initial deposit payments and to process the second charge? And uh, well, that's the first part of the question. Uh, do you have an so answer? I'll answer that one, one first. 
Uh, so at the moment we do not, um, before we can do that, we'll probably need to build some sort of like client portal, um, where your customers would be able to manage which payments are stored in our system. Um, it's something that we are thinking about it's on the roadmap, but, um, I don't have a good ETA for when that would be, uh, delivered. Fantastic. Uh, and then the second part of that question was, uh, are credit card numbers collected at roofer? Uh, contract signing for the selected project amounts? Um, so I will tentatively say no. Um, the way that credit card details are collected are either through that email process that I just showed you, or if you're physically with the customer, you can click collect payment now and provide the credit card details, like just kind of paired with them. Um, we are looking into building an integration out with our uh, proposals tool where if they sign it, you can say, you know, on contract signature, I want to request a 50% deposit. Uh, and then it would charge their account or charge their card live. Um, but for the time being, it would have to happen through the invoice page, either through this modal or through the uh, invoice workflow or the email workflow. Awesome. And then one last question before we move on, because I'm excited, I'm really excited for this next part. Uh, for the integration with QuickBooks in the future, do we know that it's only going to, if it's only going to be QuickBooks online or also desktop? The plan is just QuickBooks online. Um, but I'd love to hear more about, you know, what, what you're getting from QuickBooks desktop that QuickBooks online isn't supporting. Um, so I'll put my uh, email address and you can reach out to me and we can have a conversation about that. Sweet. Carrie's awesome too. She's the one that asked her and, uh, and John, John, I believe is the husband, uh, are both unreal people. So I think we met them at RoofCon, right, Pete? Yes. Can you guys hear me now? Dude, it's so clear. Yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> I had to like, I had to like strip my computer down to that thing, like pull the mics off, <laughs> off, off and all kinds of stuff, but I'm back. Yes. Nice. Yes. John and Carrie, we did meet them at RoofCon. Yeah. They signed up at RoofCon. They've been, uh, been kind of keeping an eye on them. It looks like they're doing really well on uh, roofers. So excited to see Carrie here and uh, great feedback. They have incredible feedback on a lot of features that we have going. Oh so. yeah. Love chatting with them. Awesome. Um, yeah. Feel free to reach out to me. We're in the early stages of development for QuickBooks. Um, so even anyone that's on QuickBooks online, um, feel free to reach out to me. Happy to you know hop on a call get some feedback from you or add you to our future beta user list. Sweet. Cool. Very exciting stuff, Gabby. This is really cool. Yeah. I love the partial have... payment things. Partial payments was always the big one. Uh, you know, being able to take the partial payment and still be able to keep like visibly keep track of it easily. So uh, love that you guys captured that right away and, and it's very easy to do. Yeah. And um, again, our big, the name of the game for us is, you know, maximum visibility, making it easy as, as easy as possible for you guys to get paid as quickly uh, and uh, as possible. So in addition to that invoice dashboard that I showed earlier, we also show all of the invoices on the job itself, as well as the current status of it, the balance due, the invoice total, and when the original due date was. And so as you can see, this is my, my general test uh, job. Um, but it really makes it easy for you to view it at a glance and say, oh, my gosh, I really need to follow up with Michael Habab. They, they owe us a lot of money. Um, so we also show all of this information at the job level as well. Fantastic. Cool. Um, so then the last thing that I wanted to show is more of like a sneak peek. Um, and again, this is something that I'm hoping will be coming out within the next couple of weeks is... One of the biggest pieces of feedback and one of the, honestly, the biggest limitations uh, in what I just showed you is that you're only able to convert proposals with, a, with one option uh, to an invoice. Um, and so we know a lot of our users, especially with the recent release of um, optional upgrades, uh, have been finding this to be just fairly limiting and making it really difficult for them to have that kind of, you know, seamless one-click experience. Um, so what we've done is expanded our existing workflow where you can just take a single proposal with a single option, uh, where you can to now you can take a single proposal with as many options and upgrades that the user has selected and convert that to an invoice. Um, so depending on how you choose to bill, I can say, I'm only going to, uh, create one 
invoice for option one, and then I'm going to create an option, uh, an invoice for option two and that upgrade. And so it's pretty flexible based off of how you want to bill your customers. Um, it's not fully finished yet. So if I click continue, it won't actually create the invoice. Uh, but this was one of our biggest pieces of beta user feedback. Um, and, you know, wanting to have that kind of um, easy one click experience that we have um, today with a single option, they wanted it for, you know, multi options and optional upgrades as well. Uh, and this will also impact our material orders integration. Um, so that way, again, we don't want anyone to be doing duplicate entry. Uh, and we want our, our system to be talking seamlessly with itself. Uh, and this will just take it one step even further. That's super cool. That's a that's a big one yeah. where we've been hearing a lot of feedback with, and it just it makes life even easier now that just the uh, being able to select the different options there is really, really cool. Yeah. We're we're super excited. Yeah, I love that. And, and you know, just thinking Go ahead, Pete. Yeah, thinking of like multi trade guys specifically, you know, like if I'm a multi trade guy you know, being able to either bill collectively or, or potentially separately, depending on the timing of the projects, this is pretty powerful stuff. Cool. Uh, and then the last thing that I'll show is I know that I, I briefly mentioned it was, uh, our email templates. Um, so this is another big piece of beta feedback. Um, users want to be able to create, you know, custom email, uh, email templates for their invoices, just to have that kind of consistency. So we are actively working on it. Um, we will have one pre-built template that you can add just out of the box. Um, that includes, you know, dear billing customer name um, as uh, and a link to the invoice. Uh, and that'll work both from the invoice page as well as um, if you are on our, you know, uh, full CRM, if you click email and uh, select, oh, I didn't actually add that to my account. Um, you'll be able to uh, select that invoice template and um, email your invoice directly from the CRM. Let's That's really that cool. actually saved. I can't tell. I don't know that I actually saved that successfully, um, but it would appear here uh, for you to be able to use for you know all future emails. Yeah, that email functionality makes it so much easier and be able to track that in the same job card just to know, like, say say you're a sales manager or an owner and you have sales reps underneath you, you want to double check, did they send out that invoice button? Uh, you can see right there in that same job view and be able to have understanding exactly what's going on with your company. So it's a huge, huge benefit there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, and I think that's about it for, for me. Um, we do have a payments dashboard similar to the invoices dashboard, which again is just to give you an at a glance view of, you know, the money that you're expecting you should be expecting to come in and whether or not it's been funded. Awesome. Awesome. We have another question that came up in here then. How are refunds and improper charges handled? That's a great question. So I'll say and and I'll be like completely frank, right now it's not the most ideal process. So if you do want to do a refund, um, we will provide you with a login to our payment processor and you'll be able to process the refund directly through them. Um, we do have plans to have that fully integrated into the roofer platform, um, probably after QuickBooks. So it'll be the first thing that we work on after our QuickBooks integration. Uh, and that'll come be complete with, you know, the concept of credit memos um, as well as integrated refunds. We have a, a material ordering question here, Gabby, if you want to yeah. answer that. It's, I'll take uh, a stab at it. Yeah. yeah it's, uh, <laughs> it says, will we ever have the ability to split material orders between different suppliers? I know this comes up quite often when you have guys that are doing multiple trades. So, <clears throat> you know, let's say I'm ordering my roofing supplies from one supplier, my siding from another supplier. Uh, how easily will I be able to create a material order to different suppliers off of potentially the same proposal? So I think... Um, this is all going to be conjecture. So take this with a grain of salt. Um, I think that it, it, <laughs> we it, love it, would depend, <laughs> it would kind of depend on how you create the proposal. So if you put all of your line items, um, and all of your materials into the same option within a proposal, it might be a little bit more difficult for us to split it out by supplier. That being said, we do have plans on building catalog integrations to suppliers directly where you can, you know, have different line items associated to an ABC supplier or a beacon or an SRS. 
And so if there's certain line items that are only associated to one supplier versus another, um, we would ultimately split those into different um, material orders. So kind of a roundabout answer, um, I would say it's entirely on the table. I think it really depends on how you break it up within the proposal and how you break it up within the catalog. Um, but what I'll do is put you in contact with our supply chain uh, and suppliers uh, product manager who works exclusively on catalog and material orders. Yeah, and I think a, an important thing here to note, Nick, is yeah, say a couple comments kind of uh, referring to this, but if you guys are not currently using the multi-option proposals, like it is extremely powerful. And, uh, and obviously it's going to be extremely powerful feeding our material orders, feeding our invoicing. So uh, if you guys aren't familiar with how to use their multi-options, you know, make sure that you, uh, you jump on with your success manager and, and find out how you can better utilize that for sure. Yeah, that's a, that's a really, really beneficial thing in there. Uh, Yanev, uh, I DM'd you on here. Just if you want, my email's at the top, nick at roofer.com. Just hit me up with that as well. But super, super powerful stuff there. Um, oh, yeah, yes, uh, Jen, we should do a multi-option proposal masterclass. That'll be fun. Um, Chris has super about discounts, Nick. Yeah, I'm excited <laughs> for that one. <laughs> Discount. Uh, you want to touch on that, Gabby? I know that's not necessarily your realm, is it? Discounts? Uh, there. I mean, there's heavy overlap. So <laughs> I'll say that um, discounts is going to be coming out through the proposals tool first. So you'll be able to start adding discounts um, through your options and through these proposals. Uh, I won't speak to the timeline on that. I'll let uh, the proposals team handle, handle that. Uh, but then we will obviously have an integration with our invoicing tool as well, where you can create a uh, discount. Um, and also import a discount off of a proposal and have it uh, reflected in your invoice. Um, so that is, you know, we we just talked about that with the engineering team today. So it is very much like up next. It's it's coming out very, very soon. Yeah. And we'll be having a closed beta uh, in April. Um, so Chris, hit me up. You got my email, nick at roofer.com at the top there, and we can get you on it. Some, it's really beautiful. They've done a really fantastic job with it. Uh, I'm looking into the attendance of the audience here and John Starry just left, but uh, John Starry would cry if he heard that in, uh, discounts are coming out next week because he's been asking for that for a little bit. So I'll have to send him a DM and uh, let him know. Yeah, I think I shed a tear a little bit when I heard that. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Uh, any other questions that are out in the crowd there? Some great suggestions here on some future some future master classes. It looks like, yes, we got uh, <laughs> the multi option will be a fun one, and uh, um, the master class for everything. Raphael, I'm I'm all for it. Yeah, just we got to we we got to we got to add them in. We got a couple good ones coming up too, so uh, stay tuned for those. I have some exciting ones in there, but uh, I think it it's really good for this uh, uh, meeting to take a look at uh, what Gabby's got here too. Is how to sign up for roofer payments. Cause one thing I'll just spoil it. It doesn't cost you anything to sign up for roofer payments. So if you're on a paid plan, a pro premium or elite plan, sign up because who knows, maybe you're at a door one day and somebody wants to pay with credit card, even if you're not offering it and go from there. So it'd be, uh, it'd be great. So uh, Gabby, take it away. Yeah, I would actually say, I mean, to mimic Nick's point, like it is free to sign up. Um, once once you submit your application, our payment processor typically reviews the application same day. And if they require any sort of extra information from you, um, they'll follow up directly by email. Um, typically, it takes about, I would say, five to seven business days to get fully approved and activated. So if you think maybe one day you're going to want to take credit cards or maybe one day you're going to run into the scenario where you don't want to drive out to go pick up a check and you just want to email them a payment link and get their ACH details, like sign up sooner rather than later. Um, Cause we've definitely had a couple of users who were like, Oh, a little on the fence, uh, but ended up signing up. And then w literally one week later, they're like, Oh, I'm so glad that we did. Um, because someone asked to take, uh, to process credit card payments. Um, and we were able to just say, yeah, sounds great. We can do that right now with you. Um, so if you're interested in signing up, um, you can come into your, you click here settings, you come into your integrations tab, and then you click sign up. 
and we'll open up a um, application link for you in a new tab. Um, and you'll just go in and fill out your details here. If you, uh, if you needed, you know, some extra details uh, or wanted to talk to one of our team members, um, no, you don't see it anymore because you've already started an application, but there is a learn more button, which would allow you to sign up for a call with your CSM and they would be able to kind of talk you through it, um, go over any questions that you might have and also dig into the processing fees a little bit more as well. That's fantastic. It's so easy to get signed up and it's just right there in the integrations page. So if you're on there, sign up like you're said, like uh, Gabby said, it, you never know when it's going to be useful to you. And if it's there and you're not using it, it's better than you needing it and it's not there. So a nice bonus. Yeah. Yep. Our processor doesn't require any sort of minimums. They don't charge you to have an account open with them or anything like that. Um, so it's kind of only upside. Awesome. Awesome. Pete, anything else? Yeah, I'm just taking a look to see what other questions we have here. It looks like we have a question from Kiri <clears throat> that says she's excited for multi workflows to come out. Uh, she said, if they have an option that would require a different workflow and select them both, can the contract be split into separate workflows or should that be separate contracts? I would say, what do you think, Nick? I would say probably separate jobs if you're going to run it through separate workflows. Yeah. You, you want to keep it clean uh, overall and just make sure that it's running uh, properly there. So separate jobs will make, make it a little bit easier unless you're going to be taking that job from workflow to workflow in different time frames, then that would, I would probably keep it at the same thing. Um, but uh, if it's the same time frame, separate jobs will make it a lot easier because you can just see them all move across. Yeah, I think one of the things that used to be a deciding factor for us on the CRM side was how is it going to be scheduled? You know, when we get to scheduling, <clears throat> our calendar comes out here eventually in the near future, you'll have the, the ability to schedule these events. And if it's uh, you're doing multiple things on the same address, they may be contingent on each other. Uh, one may be waiting for the other one to finish. So the scheduling can get a little funky. So sometimes creating separate jobs for those individual activities can help with scheduling as well. Big time. Cool. Any other questions? It looks like we're good there. I don't really see any other ones. I think we've covered a lot of them on the way awesome. along the way here. Well, Gabby, that was awesome. I'm so excited for for more people to see the value and start using this. So this is a great thing to have. I'm excited to post this all over social, let people know about that. So um, but uh, really excited to get that all moving. All of our past master classes can be found at river.com slash master classes. Um, Pete, there's one more question in there that is, uh, it, it's the, the Pete special. What's that? <laughs> it is. Uh, do you have a preview of how the schedule will work? Uh, <laughs> coming soon, I would say, I think that's, you know, it's, it's something that's in, in the works and, uh, lots and lots of research and time put into scheduling and calendar and, and figuring all that out. So uh in the near future i think we will have something that you can take a look at so definitely keep you guys posted on that as that comes up um yeah other than that lots of stuff coming down the pipe so keep an eye out i'm sure we'll have a lot of uh a lot of new stuff coming out a lot of good master classes coming up i think what is this uh, april 9th is our next one right nick yeah april 9th and that one i believe is on inspections it is with um, Matt, right? Matt Danskin Matt, coming on. Yeah, that one will be really fun to talk about that from an insurance and a retail perspective because that's going to be uh, really good. So that, that'll that be able to open that uh, question up there. Um, to quickly just smash through some of those questions there, uh, Yaniv, uh, we're working on a way to kind of remove cancel jobs from one. Um, so we'll have that there, but you could you could mark it as lost for the meantime and pull it over to the lost channel. So just go into your job card and mark it at lost. Uh, ben, uh, I would start using Google Calendar if you think it's going to work. Uh, it's safe to say that we'll probably be working with them in the future as well. Um, and then Miguel, yes, always on YouTube and always at roofer.com slash masterclass. Cool. All right. Well, thank you, Gabby. Uh, lots of great information. And, uh, you know, like I said, if, <clears throat> like Nick said, if you guys are not uh, using payments at this point, it's worth just going on to your, uh, you know, onto your platform and signing up. It doesn't cost anything to get signed up just in case you guys want to start to use it in the future. 
Um, if you do have questions ever about anything, as far as payments go or any other part of the, the platform, feel free to reach out to Nick or I or your customer success uh, person that's assigned to you. They can always help guide you. And, uh, you know, our team is always here to help. So anything that we can do, uh, some great suggestions, I think, on some future master classes there based on some of the comments. So uh, we've got some opportunities there. And uh, we appreciate everybody jumping on today. Any last comments, Getty? Nope. Um, if any, if anyone has any questions, obviously reach out to anyone that Pete mentioned, or you, you have my email as well. All right. Well, thank you everybody for coming on and uh, glad for joining us. And, and hopefully you guys learned something new today about Rupert payments. And uh, we look forward to seeing lots of payments coming through the platform mm -hmm. here in the near future. Awesome. Thanks so much, everyone. All right. Thank you guys. Have a good night.